facial trauma is very commonly associated with either road traffic accidents or interpersonal violence or sometimes it could be even sports injuries. Now, facial trauma is again very much associated with head injury. So the most important thing is basically to rule out head injury. So it's basically when you're seeing emergency department, we would do a CT scan to rule out if there's any head injury. And once we have made sure that there is no intracranial injury, then we address the facial trauma which is associated. So there are two broad categories of facial trauma. One is the soft tissue trauma, wherein you can have a cut on the skin or it could be a cut on the soft tissues. That's the muscles which are associated with the facial structure. And the second category is basically the skeleton. That's where you have an injury which could involve the jaw fracture. It could be the lower jaw or the upper jaw. Sometimes it could be the nasal bone or it could be the cheekbone or it could be the bone surrounding the eye socket or the forehead bone. And this is what maxillofacial surgeons do, right? So we address both the heart tissue as well as the soft tissue trauma. Now, if it is an isolated soft tissue trauma, then we basically debride the area. The most important thing in facial lacerations is actually debriding. That means that you need to take out the road grit. The road dirt which is there needs to be scrubbed out very, very well. Otherwise, you get tattooing, you get a lot of infection. And the scarring which is produced is very bad. So once the area has been debrided, nicely cleaned up, then we use very, very fine sutures. These sutures are thinner than your hair. It's usually 5-0 or 6-0 uh, fine sutures which we use to put the skin and the muscles back into its normal position. Unfortunately, whenever you have a facial cut, you will still have a scar. But the scar can be minimized to a significant extent by a competent surgeon. And this is very, very important. Now, when you have heart tissue trauma, we are talking about bone fractures. Just like anywhere else when you have fractures in the jaw, the bone has to be basically fixed in its normal position. And in the jaw too, we need to fix it in its normal position. And we need to hold it with tiny plates and screws, which will basically allow the jaw to function very rapidly. And by and large, a lot of these trauma can be addressed from inside the mouth itself. So you don't need to have a scar. We don't have to make a cut outside. If you have an existing laceration, we usually go through that itself. Otherwise, we can make a cut inside the mouth and reach the bone where the fracture is there, we fix it in position. So that is how we manage both heart tissue as well as soft tissue trauma. This leads very minimal amount of discomfort to the patient. They can get back to their normal lifestyle very rapidly. I remember when I was training 30 years back, we used to wire the jaws together for about six to eight weeks. And in this day and age, all my patients basically go back to you know normal lifestyle within 24 hours time. They can function normally, they can eat normally, they can speak normally, and they can open and close their jaws too.